Javier Villanueva is one of four members of the Adam State men's golf program who represents a nation outside of the United States. Bryant Johnson welcoming you into another edition of KSBK's Grizzly Connect. Javi is a freshman, has really been uh, an instrumental leader for a Grizzly team that's been averaging under a 300 round in the last few weeks, but well, we just found some startling information out. So Javier, before we can talk about your history, growing up in, in the Mexico City area, coming to Adam State, how are you reacting with the knowledge that your assistant coach, Chris Day, enjoys the music of Carly Rae Jepsen? Um, uh, you know, it's always funny listening, like hearing Chris talking about his musical preferences. We just have fun with the golf team, and he jams out all the songs, so it's really funny to uh, listen which are his preferences. We don't see that side of Chris Day in the offices, so this is a little shocking that this <laughs> is what's happening, you know, at Cattails and around the, the state and area when, when you're playing around, but it seems like you have a fun team. Basically, a lot of new faces, and Chris was saying, you know, you're, you're the guy that likes to make everybody laugh, but you're also performing. What, what do you feel like your uh, meaning is to the team, what you like to do? Well, you know, like, um, I play good for the team, but um, I like to talk a lot. So, you know, everything I say, I try to make it funny because it's like we're here to enjoy the time. So I try always to make jokes with the team and all that. And everyone gets along, so that's really cool with the team. Javier Villanueva with the Adam State Men's Golf Program, a freshman, and he's comfortable just coming into Alamosa and, and having a new team, a, a new city, a new country, and, and just gelling with them. Uh, where does that come from in you, that, that comfort to just go into any situation and, and be you? Well, uh, since little, uh, I've been really shy, but now, like, uh, you need to be, like, outstanding and all that. So I like to get out everywhere and, like, just be who I am, like, be cool, play some golf, and have fun uh, everywhere, like, no matter where you are. No, and the guys are really nice, so I, I've been, like, I feel really comfortable with the team. Well, bring us into your world growing up outside of Mexico City, northeast of Mexico City, and in, in the huge metropolis that that city is. So when you're trying to go play around, where are you going? What's going on in the in the city? Bring us into life in Mexico City as a, a young golfer. Well, my home course was really close to my like house, so that was no problem. But trying to get out like from where I live, like uh, the city. And getting into Mexico City was really like crazy because you know 25 million people. It's like you need to learn to deal with the traffic, with all those things. Like to get to another place, maybe like to play golf in another place, even if the course was like 20 minutes away without traffic, it will be like one hour. So you need to deal with all those kind of things. But so just like Alamosa, almost the same. Yeah, I think a little bit like more relaxed in Mexico City. <laughs> what did your parents say and your family say when you're like, all right, I got this place, I'm going to go and play golf. It's a great location. It's got 12,000 people in it. <laughs> oh, that's a great story because um, I was talking uh, with my mom and we came and visit here and we stayed like at, at, um, at a hotel in here. So it was like, well, m there's nothing to do in <laughs> here. And we came back to Mexico because my dad didn't come to visit. And he's like, well, did you like it? Like, And I was like, yeah, I really like it. And my mom was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> There's nothing in there. But um, my dad came like to um, to the live me here. So they actually like it because they, you, know, you get to know uh, everything in here. So it's a big change. But uh, my family like understood me when I came. And that's that's really good. So y you're in a position where maybe the next four years of your life at least are, are going to be spent in Alamo. So w what are your, your personal goals? We've seen that you can produce on the course early. You, you average a 71.8 really in high school uh, when you're at Monterey Tech. But here you are putting together consistent rounds in the low 70s. What are your ambitions? Well, uh, you know, my dream is to become a tour pro. I don't know, but I'll try to do it. Like um, I'm always on the like course trying to get better and like – uh, I hope that after these four years, I'll, I'm prepared like for life, like with uh, my bachelor's degree, but also I maybe I can become a tour pro after this. Javier Villanueva with the Adam State Men's Golf Program, uh, coming in from Mexico City. You're kind of insulated from a, a lot of you know the unfortunate activities taking place in border towns and other locations throughout Mexico. But being a young guy, being a teenager. And, and seeing firsthand what's happened the last three, four years in certain parts of your country, uh, how does that affect you and, and how does that affect Mexicans in general? Well, it's a really bad situation for us, but where I live, it was safe. I've lived like, I have like a close 
like friends that they will kidnap and all that that was really bad but you need to deal like take your cautions with like all that so you need to learn where to go and where not to where were your friends from were they from the high school you were at your golf team uh from my high school they were from my high school two friends from my like they that it was a really bad situation we lived in back there and not only friends my mom's friend everyone like Everywhere you go, you need to have your cautions with that, and but you need to enjoy it. Ev like no matter what, you need to have fun. Like try to be safe all the time. You know, but, but it's your attitude that reflects that mindset. A lot of people talk the big talk about living every day like it's their last, and and going out of their way to talk to as many people. But I you've already established yourself amongst the Adam State, you know, golf team is one of the most fun-loving and enjoyable guys. So how do you think uh, some of the first-hand drama you've experienced in Mexico affects your day-to-day -day outlook? Well, um, in here I am, like, um, I take my cautions no matter what. Like, I'm not like all the other guys that just, like, go around and all that. Like, I try, um, I feel like I'm more mature for these things, but it's good because um, I still have fun and all that, but always, like, take my car, like, be safe and all the time. That's what Mexico taught me to do, like. And it also taught you that it is okay to rib your assistant coach if he enjoys Carly Rae Jepsen. When you heard assistant coach Chris Day say, no, no, she's not bad, I quote, actually like her new single, <laughs> what was going on in your mind? <laughs> I was just laughing and li I was picturing him listening, like <laughs> he stopped his, because he's always serious in there, <laughs> like <laughs> watching him singing in there. <laughs> I was laughing. Oh, we need to get on this. Let's just go a little, you know, co-op, me and you, covert mission, and we'll go document Chris Day singing. Nobody wants to see that, but they do want to see Javier <laughs> Villanueva. Freshman year is off to a great start. Thanks for joining us on KSPK's Grizzly Connect. Oh, thank you for having me here. It was nice. All right, Bryant Johnson, another edition of KSPK's Grizzly Connect. More after this break. As the Adams State volleyball team enjoys their first weekend at home in this 2012 season, Lindsay Sten is getting ready to make her freshman debut inside Plocky Hall. She'll have friends and family hanging out throughout uh, what should be a great weekend. Last weekend of September, you're finally at home. When you look at actually waking up on a Friday and Saturday and not having to have a hotel breakfast, how excited are you? Very excited. We're a little, those continental breakfasts after a while get pretty old, the orange juice, everything, but we're excited to actually eat at our own college and just kind of do our normal routine and then just go into the game prepared. Canyon, Texas, Pueblo, Colorado, Las Vegas, New Mexico, Silver City, New Mexico, Gunnison, Colorado. Who has the best continental breakfast? Ooh, I don't know. Any of the holidays in, like, I think I'd have to say, ooh, Maybe when we were in Texas, they had the best. Their cinnamon rolls were pretty good. <laughs> See, this is the type of breaking news and pressure cooking questions KSBK is renowned for at Holiday Inn. How do you feel about a little plug early <laughs> in the ASU season for a successful freshman outside editor who stepped in seamlessly? Teams 11 and 1 going into the, the final weekend of September, ranked number 19 in the country. Uh, you have only experienced success since you arrived here. What do you attribute to the success? I'd have to say the way the team works in practice and out of practice, how everyone gets along on the court and off the court. They hang out even when they don't have to, and we just bond really well, and I think it brings it onto the court and helps a lot in our communication. It's Lindsay Stent with the Adams State Volleyball Program. Three years ago, you came out to a team camp from Norwood, had a chance to meet Coach Mortensen, and you were really a new prospect in Colorado volleyball. No club team coming from a town with 438 people, but Lindy knew that there was a lot of potential and talent there. What happened with you and the college recruiting game after the Adams State team camp three years ago? Well, I made my commitment really early, so I really didn't – well, I, I put myself out there, but at the same time I made my commitment, so I didn't have – didn't make any interest with any other colleges. I had to turn a couple down because I was excited to come here, and I had my commitment already set, so I really didn't need anything else. Well, Lindsay's immediately become a set rotation player during the course of every single game, either the second line or early in the match. You're going to be in there with Letitia and DePriest and Dom. You're going to be a part of, of that first team feel. It's hard to do as a true freshman at, at any level, but especially for a great team. Why do you think you've been able to become such a fixture in the rotation? 
I think it's because a lot of the upperclassmen are very, like, they help us freshmen come in. They don't, they motivate us, and we're not afraid to come out and do our thing without them yelling at us, and we just, they, we have a really good bond with them, and I think they treat us with respect, and I think it works out really well. Okay, but when you were still going through the recruiting process and, and committed to Adams in your mind and, and heart, what were you doing when other schools were calling you? I mean, you're, you've got Mesa and Fort Lewis in your backyard that finally realized in, in Little Norwood there's this great Armac prospect, and they're going to miss out on her. What did you hear from other schools? Well, they talked to me, but at that time I just had to fly out tell them. I had some interest from them earlier, but they just they didn't give me – any interest we communicated but they didn't actually offer me anything and when I had my offer from Adams and I was excited to go here and I committed I just had to flat out tell them no they waited too long it's just how it is that's how the recruiting process goes oh, fill out some paperwork and, and get back to us but you didn't hear them express any hey you know let us know when we can check in it's definitely how the recruiting game works and, and I would imagine it, it would be different in, in a, a town like Norwood where there aren't a lot of additional prospects, but you were kind of a prodigy from, from a young age. I mean, being able to play basketball and track is, and track and field as well, being a state champion, a two-way state champion in the 300 IM for track and field, oh, what was your rep like? What was it like for you being an athlete in Norwood and, and having so many accomplishments? It was really nice because like, I had connections with everyone. I mean, throughout all of my sports, I met so many different people. I just had so many connections, and I think doing so many different sports really helped me in the long run, just being an all-around athlete. So bring us inside your world growing up and playing sports in Norwood. Facilities, are you rummaging through the National Forest and, and having fun during your runs and cross-country events there? I mean, what, what was it like being a part of a small town in such an interesting and rugged place in the state and country? Well, it was really nice being in a small town because we kind of had the we had the grouping like we do at home games here. It's a small town feel, so everyone comes to support. And during track season, we didn't have a whole lot of the we didn't have the nice track to run on. All we had was a football field, so we ran on the football field and practiced hurdles on the football field. So that was kind of a disadvantage for me. But in the long run, it kind of helped me to be prepared for any situation. I didn't have all the options that other schools had, so I just had to work that much harder. And you also built some great rivalries with the surrounding schools. And, of course, in, in the small world of sports, you can go from rival to a teammate just like that. You look at Emily Langley at Telluride, one team that you just battled with when you were in, in high school. And now here she is, unfortunately, out for the year with an ACL injury. But uh, when you see somebody that you were battling in high school now going to the school that you're going to be attending five hours away, how does the relationship change? I think it's really nice. I mean, we had a good relationship even before, like we knew each other. We were from close schools, and we had a rivalry with Telluride, but we also had a respect for each other. We weren't teams that, like, we fought against each other, but we had a mutual respect off the court. So it was really easy for us to become good friends. And I thought it was a good, good thing when I found out she was going to be at the same school as me. Well, it's been a great season so far, and just a month of actual Division II competition for Lindsey Stinton. Of course, Adam State's off to an incredible start through the first five weeks of the year, 11 and 1, and number 19 in the country. Lindsey, first of many conversations with us. Thanks. Thank you. This is KSPK's Grizzly Connect. My name is Bryant Johnson. It was a career performance for Samantha Hall as the Adams State senior golfer put together a 36 hole round of 159, finished in 11th in what turned out to be a pretty remarkable event for Sam in the first week of uh, September 25th. Really a strong performance for the Canadian as we welcome you back to KSPK's Grizzly Connect before we, we chat about the successful senior season. How many verses of O Canada can you recite to me right now? Um, I could recite all of them, some in French too, but I don't think... You can bilingual it for me right now? I am pretty fluent in French, yeah, but I don't think anyone really wants to hear my singing, so... I don't want to hear you <laughs> saying it, but I'm just saying you could you could actually compose both verses in French coming from Ontario. I would have thought that would have been just necessary in Quebec, but you, you know, you, you got to have the French background as well in the Toronto area? Yes. Um, in Canada or at least in Toronto, Ontario, we started French in grade three, but my mom's best friend was French, so I started speaking it way before three. When you are upset on the course, English or French, what comes out? Um, it depends on the situation. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
There's been times where it's come out French, and people have just been like, what are you <laughs> saying? Um, <laughs> this has happened yeah. with Adam State. <laughs> Get, give us a scenario of when this happened. Was it just putting and chipping, and then you just look down and kick the dirt and scream something in French? Um, mostly on misdrives. I like to hit the ball long and straight, but when it doesn't go long and straight, then it usually comes out a little bit. A little bit of mixture of French and English. Yeah, Emma's balancing a, a pretty arduous point in, in her career, being a focus golfer, a leader for a team that's reached the NCAA tournament in back-to-back -back sessions. Yet you're also looking forward to a career in an industry that we, of course, can uh, connect on when you want to have a, a communications career and you're working with Grizzly TV and being an on-air talent yet still focusing on athletics. How do you balance it all? Um, it is hard. It's something that I like take pride in both being a good student athlete as well as I take pride in my future career. Um, you know, for me, it's just it's it just comes easy, I guess. You know, when you love what you do, it tends to be a lot easier. So in order to balance it out, um, you know, there's long nights. There's times where, you know, you're up till 3 a.m. doing a paper or you're struggling over grammar homework. But then you kind of look at the long run and realize why you're here. And for me, the big thing is why I'm here, how I do what I do. And I just take pride in being a Grizzly, I guess. Samantha Hall with Adam State Women's Golf, uh, a team that is ready to hit the road. 11 of the next 14 days of, of Sam's life will be spent away from campus when you have such a devastating schedule and you're expected to balance school with athletic performance. Uh, how do you approach long road trips, just not the quick turnarounds? Um, the long road trips are a little bit harder because you do have to keep in contact with your professors. You do have to really keep on top of everything. Um, communication is the key with your professors, with your coach, you know, even with your teammates. Um, as the senior golfer on the team, I've been thinking of ways that can help the whole team prosper as a whole. Like if the whole team has something they need to work on. I know we're going to be in California, so it's going to be really tempting to kind of not do your homework. But it's just a matter of finding that balance and being able to overcome the stress, overcome the thought process on the golf course and it's also important when you're on the golf course to block out everything that's stressing you out so you can really be at your peak performance well, from a performance standpoint it's not like you, you've struggled and obviously you've had your moments as everyone does but adjusting to different climate altitude a lot of golfers struggle initially with what colorado can offer but when you're playing in March off Lake Ontario, I would imagine you're accustomed to some challenging days with the weather. When, when you think about growing up in Toronto and some of the, those miserable days on the course, what, what comes to mind? And, and give us an example of, of one of those days where it's just, oh, this is, this is golf in Canada and we got to go out there and perform. Okay, I was, um, team, I was on a CJGA event, the Canadian Junior Golf Association, and we were playing in Ottawa which is the capital of Canada and Ontario. Um, and I played from, I think it was, we teed off at 11, and I didn't get off the course till 9 <laughs> at night. It was snowing. It was sleeting. The holes were filled with water. It was pretty miserable. Um, thank goodness my parents loved me, and they brought me hot chocolate for after. But you, I, like, the amount of layers you had on was ridiculous. I don't even know how I swung. But, I mean, that's Canada, eh? It, it's funny because if, if you're part of athletics in the Midwest of, of the U.S. or in Canada, you just don't make excuses. It's like, whatever. It's a blizzard. You got to play today. Uh, the mentality then, when, when has it assisted you, those April days, when it's you get the snow rain mix in Colorado? When, when do you really think that you've, you've been able to in, enhance your game in a scenario where a lot of people would crumble? Um. I think the best example of that would be was when we first went to regionals in Minnesota. Um, it was freezing those first like two days. And I just remember thinking, I've been through this. I'm, I'm at home. I didn't play as well as I wanted to, but I just remember thinking, I'm, I'm at home. You know, this is, this is not new to me. It, it's funny because you went in, in May of 2011 to Minnesota, and I grew up in Minneapolis, and I'm, I'm hyped with Coach Meyer at the time. Like, every, you're going to have a great time. The course is great in St. Paul. It's 37 and rainy, yeah. you know, and then I was back in May this year, and it's 90 degrees. That's just what you're going to get mm -hmm. during a different setting in, in courses in the Midwest and in, in Canada. What, what was kind of the craziest four-day experience you had when you were on the junior tour 
in Canada dealing with that wide range of, of weather where you just don't get the straight, consistent weather that a lot of people in the Southwest, a lot of the golfers that come from Arizona and, and California are accustomed to? Um, provincials, my senior year of high school, we were again in Ottawa and practice round was sunny and warm. I got shorts on. It was, it was great. And then the day of the tournament, it was, it was so cold, so rainy. It was just, it wasn't fun, but I mean, my senior year, you got to make it count. So it does. And you're obviously having a remarkable run this year. Before we let you go, you get one Canadian where you get a refund, one celebrity refund, like we'll take them off your hands. Who would it be? Justin Bieber. You know, I thought we were going to have an argument there. I really thought this was going to be, because I was going to, I was going to say Bieber. I was going to say, you guys going to have Kesha. We'll give you Kesha and take Bieber in exchange. If your entire life is made up of saying the word swaggy, you do not get to claim a country. This is true. Um, I've been told that people would rather have me in the United States than <laughs> Justin Bieber, which is quite comforting. So, I mean, green card, you know, maybe a little switcheroo. We'll tell you what, we, we have a lot of work to do, you and I, and I tell you what, this is going to be our mission for 2013, refund Justin Bieber, take him back. Sam, great chatting with you. Thank you so much. Samantha Hall, you can catch her on the links with Adam State Women's Golf and, of course, on Grizzly TV, the star of Adam State's Grizzly TV sports show for the 2012-2013 season. Another great episode of KSBK's Grizzly Connect. My name is Bryant Johnson. Thank you so much.